Here's a little vector math lesson for you. Remember when you were in school and you were like, what the fuck do I need this mathematics for? Well, the time has come, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to need some mathematics today, okay? Here's a little bit of vector math. I created this hypothetical situation because I encountered something similar when I was modeling this Lamborghini Countach. We're modeling the center console here for a course on Patreon. Go check that out. And I, I, I created this hypothetical situation in which you have some surfaces here. We have this flat surface, you have this flat surface, this is a flat surface, and this is a flat surface, okay? And then we have something going on here in the middle. It doesn't matter, whatever, right? It doesn't matter what this is. Just something, some kind of little bump, some kind of little hole sticking out of here. And for the sake of this explanation, so let me show you what might happen, why I'm making this video, okay? You're moving something around here. Notice how this cylinder here is connected at various points of these planes, but everything is perfectly smooth. Everything is perfectly flat. There's no shading issues or nothing. And let's say you're sliding something around like this, okay? And suddenly, oops, you bend something like this, okay? And you come to a point now where, let's say you did something else you didn't notice, you can't undo this anymore, okay? You can't come back here, Control-Z is not gonna work, now this is destructive. So how are you gonna come, how are you gonna be able to fix this so that it's perfectly lined, so it's flat and smooth like this, so it's, it's back to the position where it was before, okay? I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. So the thing here is that you can't obviously just bring it down because you're never going to get it exactly right, okay? Sure, you can kind of do it carefully bit by bit if you have a right Mac cap and you if you just kind of keep sliding it back and forth. You're going to get it more or less right to a point where you're not going to see this little twist anymore, but we're trying to keep it professional. We're trying to be exact here. I'm trying to make a point here. So we're going to we're going to do this the right way, okay? We're not going to do this the amateur way. We're not going to do this the ghetto way. We're going to do the right way, the professional mathematical way. Okay, we want to make this point here perfectly flat with this surface. Okay, in other words, we want this vertex over here, which we lifted up, we want it to be on the same plane once again as this. Okay, because in vector math, this is a plane defined by this vector. Okay, this arrow over here represents a vector. I should do some fucking math lessons for you guys. I should start a separate channel for math, physics, and all this other shit. This line over here represents the normal of this face okay and the normal just means the line which is perpendicular to this plane okay it's perpendicular to this face and you can also check your normals in edit mode by turning on this little line here it shows the exact normal of every single face it shows like the exact direction in which the face is facing essentially okay it shows a line which is perfectly perpendicular to each individual face and once you have this out of the way let's get rid of this we have these arrows here representing the normal of each of these surfaces, okay? So if we, if the, the way this works is if you take any line which is perpendicular to this arrow over here at this height, okay, at this point on the local z-axis, let's say, any line which is perpendicular to this will be somewhere on this plane. So you can see this demonstrated by this, since this is perpendicular, this is a right angle from this from this uh, normal line, from this arrow over here. We can rotate this along the z-axis, the local z-axis like this, or around. we can pivot it around this arrow here. If we rotate this, every single arrow and every single point of this thing is going to always stay completely flat, completely against this surface. It's gonna stay perfect, okay? Which means every point here is exactly perpendicular to this, it is exactly on this line. And we want to bring this to a point where it is exactly the same, it is exactly that, right? And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. The first way to do this is to slide this back into place, all right? See, what happened was everything was fine until we slid this up the wrong edge, okay? You see, if you look at this example, all these edges are on the same plane, okay? They're all exactly on the same plane. They can be defined by two points which are perfectly on this plane. In other words, if you drew a line between any of these vertices and this normal over here, it would be a perfect 90 degree angle, okay? That means that this is exactly on the same plane. It is perfectly perpendicular. A line from here to here is perpendicular to this, all right? So this is in place, but this here isn't. So the way to do this is we can slide, see what I'm talking about is we can slide this anywhere along these edges because these edges are on the plane. So if we slide this vertex along these edges, it's still going to stay on the plane because if it's at any point on these two edges, it's still on the plane because the edges are on the plane, right? 
as soon as we start lifting it up well now we're going above the surface and now we start getting this twisting okay so we have to bring it back to a point where we're sliding it along these edges okay so the way to do this is we can slide this vertex back to a point which we know is on the plane for example this vertex we know that this vertex is on the plane because there's no bending here this vertex if we drew a line between this vertex and this point here which is currently uh, marked by the 3d cursor this line here let's do that let's make a hypothetical line like this this line is perfectly perpendicular to this arrow okay which means now that now that we slid this vertex now that we sl slide this vertex over here this vertex is currently on this plane all right because now it's on this vertex it's in the same place as this one and now if we scale this vertex away from since it's on the plane if we scale this away from another point which is also on this uh, plane it's going to stay on the plane okay if we slide it upwards well now we're lifting it up again so that's no good but see if we slide it down this way now you see it's perfectly flat again we can just kind of slide it back into place as long as we don't slide it up along this edge okay so we can slide it and we can scale it so we slide it all the way here we put the 3d cursor over here we use the 3d cursor as a pivot point and now we're scaling away from the 3d cursor which is on the plane and since our vertex is also on the plane it's just going to continue in that direction it's just going to stay on the plane it's just going to move further away from another point which is also on the plane and now we can just scale this up we can even look at it from top view because it's still going to continue to scale in the same direction and we can just perfectly align it we can make this perfectly flat again okay that's one way to do this and maybe that's even two ways because one way was with sliding with the g and the other way was with the 3d cursor but the third way maybe a more important way is that we can align this with a local axis which belongs to an object which is perfectly perpendicular to this plane okay so for example i have these arrows here but let me show how, how i created these arrows because these arrows are facing exactly in the same direction as this face. If we extrude this face, it's moving exactly in the direction of this arrow. Exactly. It's not like one angle, or one degree, or zero point to zero one degree. No, it's exactly the same direction. That's the main point here. And the way I did this is that I took, let's say, let's try to recreate this scenario. This is a little bit up, and we want to bring it back to the same level. All right. I take this face over here, and I press Shift and Seven on the number pad because that aligns my view with the face that I have selected. So now if you draw a line between this point and the exact point of my camera where I'm looking at, okay, the hypothetical eye in this situation, the digital eye, it's going to be a, the line from here to this point is going to be perfectly perpendicular with the plane, all right? And I'm gonna bring the 3D cursor to this face now. I'm gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna go to object mode. I'll press Shift A. I'm gonna add an empty and it's gonna be a single arrow which I'm going to align down here with my view. So now it's pointing towards me from this face, okay? And now you can see that it's perfectly perpendicular to this face. So now we want to take this to a point where if we're looking at this on a local axis, see this has a local axis, it can still move up and down, but if you press Z, uh, G and Z twice, it's going to move on a local axis because we rotate this in object mode. So it has a local y-axis, which is defined by the rotation of the object, as a local x-axis, which goes this way, as a local y-axis that goes this way. The local y-axis and the local x-axis, both of those lines, both of those axes are exactly on this plane here because the z-axis is perpendicular to the plane. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So now we just have to find a way to scale this point over here to zero on the local x axis here because this is zero on the local on the local z axis of this object i said x axis a second ago but i meant z axis okay so how are we going to do that well here's a way we can bring an object over here okay which is has the same rotation as this object in other words the same local axis as this object in other words we can put the 3d cursor on this vertex which we have to bring back down to, per uh, to perfectly align it with the plane with the surface down here we can put the 3D cursor there. Just went to my rendered view and I fucked something up. Put the 3D cursor there, shift S cursor to select it. I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to duplicate this empty because its origin is exactly down here at this point. Duplicate that, right click, and shift S selection to cursor. Okay. So now 
this arrow is exactly on this vertex, but it has the same direction as this arrow from before, which means we can move it up and down this axis, okay? In other words, this can move up and down back in the direction where it came from. Right? It can go down back the way it's supposed to. So now, if we just take this object and we bring it to zero on the local Z axis of this object, that's exactly the point where we want to have this vertex. So we're gonna bring the 3D cursor here to this object like this, we're going to take this object and we're going to scale it with the 3D cursor as a pivot point. We're going to scale it to zero. So S, Z, Z. So on the local Z axis, we're going to scale it to zero. Okay. And now this object is completely flattened against this plane. All right. So if we bring the 3D cursor to this point, to this object now, shift S, we can go back to selecting this object, back to edit mode. We select this vertex. We can just snap its selection to cursor. And it's basically just, it's like a, it's extending from this point but it's coming down exactly to this object, all right? And it's perfectly aligned now. So those are just a little bit of vector math tricks. You guys gotta pay attention to this shit. If, it, if you guys, I don't know if you learned this in elementary school, but if you didn't get to this point in school, yeah, pay attention, all right? Vector math better be your favorite fucking topic in math, because this shit is important if you're doing 3D modeling, right? Let me know what you wanna see next. I'll see you guys later.